shit. Okay, YouTubers. Uh, I had mentioned I was going to show you my, my shopsmith, but since I'm at my mom's, show, uh, show my dad's to you. Right now it's... Uh, Right now it has the uh, arbor on it for the, uh, the drill chuck, and uh, this is the what they call the head unit, and it's the power for everything. And uh, we'll loosen it off, and you know, can move the motor, and you can lock it into place wherever you need it. The table itself moves as well. Now right now it's set up for horizontal boring, and uh, you wonder, okay, what do you do for for the horizontal part? Actually, what you do is you loosen, loosen this off. There's a pin there that hold that allows you to lock it at 90 degrees, but you rotate it down and. Uh, Now you've got it locked so that you've got the table, but then you say, well, how do you keep anything on it? Well, that's where, over here, this is uh, the rip fence, and uh, put that on the table, and uh, Chunks, big chunks of wood, but I'll take a little scrap of plywood I have here. If you were wanting to drill something, you got the flat plate here, you got the, the backing plate here, so you can see that that'll go on. Then what you can also do is they have what's called a quill lock. That at the back here you can loosen it off, and it gives you quill feed like a drill press and uh, yeah, it's got uh, about five inches I think it is and that's for horizontal boring if you're going to drop it it's on uh, wheels that uh, you can drop it down to the ground um, if you need a uh, don't need a horizontal boring and you want a drill press all it takes is pulling this lever here, making sure this screw here is backed out, and to take the small uh, table off the end. So anyway, put that up, spin this in. That locks it in the vertical position, and uh, now you've got your drill press. Um, actually, I don't know if you can see that, so I'm going to rotate the camera just a little bit. But there, uh, here we go with uh, with the drill press. Um, with the feet now. I mentioned uh, doing things like dowels or tubing. You, you just have to mark this, lock this in at the 45 degree angle. And it's got all the measurements under here. Just lock it in at 45. And you loosen the table off. And you crank this and you can adjust the table. So you could get, even if you wanted the drill slightly offset on a piece of tubing. Now you put the tubing, put the tubing on. You can center by. I'll drop this down a little bit. Lock it back down again. Put that right underneath. Now, if you were wanting to center into the 
into what you're drilling. You can do it like this, or and that'll give you the you know the drilling down into the center. Or if you're drilling offset, you could set it you know at a different height, obviously this way. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's the horizontal boring to the uh, to the drill press using the same same motor. Put it back down. Loosen off the lock. Put the power unit down. Flip the lever to lock it back down. Now it's back to the horizontal position. Put this back to horizontal as well. In there. And the table can go either way. You can go tilted either way from 90 degrees. That's for doing, I'll show you that later. And tighten that up. And uh, if I wanted to use uh, use this for something else, Allen key, put it in, loosen it off, drill chuck comes off. I put on a disc, going to become a disc sander. Slide that on, same Allen key, same Allen wrench, lock it on, loosen the table off, slide it in close, fairly close to the side of the table, and take the fence off and uh, relock the quill feed. Now I have a uh, disc sander. Now let's say you were uh, trying to sand something very big and cumbersome and it's hard to move up against the disc. What you can do by loosening the table, sliding it away, just a hair, you can put whatever it is you want on there, you could use either the, uh, the rip fence or you could clamp the piece onto, onto it. table height. Once again, loosen the, the quill feed. Now you can move your disc in and out to the work instead of bringing the work to the wood or to what you're working with. Now You, uh, you know, what happens if you don't need the, uh, the disc and you want something else? A couple turns of the Allen wrench, take the disc off. Other attachment here I'll put on. I know there's no sandpaper on here. 
but I basically have just converted this thing to a drum sander. Um, of course, you have to get the the drums the the drum sandpaper for it, but you, know, you can get those. It's a standard size, and you still have the the quill feed ability with this. And you could use the, the, the drum sander in the in the horizontal or the vertical position. You could with the, uh, the sanding disc as well. Saw blade. Same Allen key. Saw blade is on. Slide the table in, raise the table up, and slide it over the blade. There's a, a set screw down between the two units that when you, you can adjust them, fine tune the blade, but when they butt together, you lock in the table. Then You lower the table down. This will do as your table height adjustment. And now you have a saw, table saw. Then you have to miter something. That's where the tilt comes in here. And you see I'm touching the blade there, so. In a case like that, you tip or tilt, and again, center your blade using your uh, your quill feet. But what you can do also is this is a center adjustable center. Got a tape or two. This, I put that in, and it's a friction fit. And that's one of the ends there for using a, a, a wood lathe. So, what you do for the wood lathe is you would drop this into place, you can adjust your height where you need it. There's little collars. So you can adjust it for center or off center, plus there's the fine tuning here which you can adjust. And then I'm not going to do it because it's a little bit awkward, but easy, fairly easy to do. You can actually take this table right out and the unit that holds the table you actually can use the, uh, the chisel rest. So when's the outcome over afterward? Okay. Spend some time on Missy. Yeah. Try and get it on the road for the spring. Yeah, we'll see. Should be doable. I hope so. Alright, well, I guess I'll see you later. Actually, I'll come up and say goodbye to the girls. Out. This episode of Grandpa's Garage is brought to you by Black Can Cola. If you needed to cut like a full 4x8 sheet of plywood, you can by pulling the pulling the headstock all the way back and the table all the way back. And putting on the, uh, the little extra table at the end here, which is also height adjustable. From the blade, you can, if I move the table all the way down, 
I can get over four feet on this. So you can cut a four by eight sheet of plywood lengthwise. Now I just need it locked down to go down and do it to move it again. Just kind of lift it back up. The wheels have a, like a two step thing to get it off the ground. Makes it easy to move it. One of the other things you can do by uh, see if I can find the part. Because if you're doing uh, smaller cuts, it's got the, you know, it's got the, the miter saw thing, but it also has this little lever actuated thing that will clamp whatever small piece of wood in there. And that can be rotated 45 degrees in either direction as well. This is a small drive shaft. And uh, what you can do with this is stick it on the other end here. I'll show you why. This here is a jigsaw. in, lock it in place, take your drive shaft, stick it on the, the drive on the jigsaw, and then just slide your head stock in until it mates. Lock the head stock. Now you have a jigsaw that's powered by the same head unit. The way it's set up here, it does have a, a little air pump built in, so it blows air down to blow the sawdust away from where you're cutting. So it helps you, uh, helps enable you uh, to see. This weighs about 30 pounds. This one's a little heavier. This one's about 35 pounds. Drop that down into place. Same drive shaft. Stick it on the drive unit. Slide the headstock back. Now it's a bandsaw. So if you wanted to do something with a bandsaw, and uh, I know it's intended for um, for wood, but. My dad and I both have the bandsaws, and uh, or my dad had it, and um, we had both have bought metal blades for it. Okay, now the unit I'm going to show you also goes on, but it has a different drive. But it's too heavy to lift just to show you, so I'm not going to bother. But. Uh, 
this unit here is a jointer. Same power unit as uh, everything else. Um, where it hooks up is on the headstock there. You'll notice that uh, there's the unit there and then there's a another drive at the bottom there. See there's the, that's the one I was hooking the drive shaft to. This one runs the jointer. Okay everyone, uh, that was a quick tour of the uh, my dad's shopsmith. Uh, and all these two parts are interchangeable with mine. Now this unit, according to the uh, all the codes on it and the serial number and everything is a uh, 1953 vintage. My dad's had it longer than I've been alive. One of the other one of the other nice features of it. I'll show you here. Slow jigsaw disc sander drum sander the dado blade the saw the router or shaper you can get a router and shaper attachments for this as well and it has quite a, a range in speeds put it all the way down. The lowest it'll go. Now I'm going to crank it up. That's the highest it goes. It'll push into the deep end here. This is the end, turn it faster, which is only to the rudder and paper speed. Have it 191953 Shopsmith Mark V. It's the same as my 1989 Shopsmith Mark V or Fun Toys for Fun Boys. Anyway, and I guess we're uh, Doing that out and walk out because uh, I believe we are going out for supper. My mom, my sister Brenda from Ottawa, and uh, my wife Amber, my sister Val, and my uh, brother in law Heinz. 